Hey, Ricky, you, you know what was awesome? What's that? Going to school. Yeah, kind of. I never thought I'd actually... <laughs> I never, I never actually thought I'd say that until my my kids can't. Oh yeah. Um, and it's like, it's like, oh yeah, there was a, there was a lot of a lot of things about going to school that was uh, that was a lot of fun. It didn't have a whole lot to do with necessarily learning. So, uh, but figured we could talk about what 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 it was like to be in school whenever we were kids and stuff. So, uh, as the as the school year kind of gets rolling on and we're trying to figure out this whole new technological craziness. Let's talk about school days. Yeah, yeah. With a, with a Z, like hot for teacher in Van Halen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I don't know if you want to start in like, like elementary, back to preschool, back to daycare. I don't know, but. Uh... Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's the whole ball of wax, right? I mean, normally you're going to end up with your high school years because those are probably the most memorable. But, uh yeah, I mean, it, it kind of starts off, and I think in the past episodes I've talked about, I jumped around a lot of schools, so I even get confused on certain years where I was. <laughs> so we would move in the middle of school year like two or three times, and it seemed like I was going to the oh, wow. same two or three schools there for a little bit, but I can't tell you when and where. It all happened between third grade and fifth grade. <laughs> well, that's cool, because, I mean, we had a... I mean, I moved back to Houston when I was in the uh, eighth grade, but um, you know, when I was a kid, we I was in went to preschool, and then you know we moved down when I was like in first grade, I guess, when we moved to uh, to Portland, and um, same thing. We went to this like little little Christian school in the town until I was in about the fifth grade. And then they actually shut down, like the, the, the school side of things shut down. And so I moved into public school, which was not as big of a culture shock as you would have thought, because it was all it was still a very small town. So everybody still knew each other, even if, you know, these kids went to the actual elementary school and we went to like the little Christian school. Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, so like I had those those things were like. Oh, flipping schools, and then up oh, flipping cities, and then <laughs> so I I know how that feels, man. But uh, yeah, yeah, man. I guess like you know, do you remember like the first day of school, like whether it's pre preschool or pre K or whatever? Uh, maybe not the specific first day. I did start in kindergarten, but uh, it was 1976. So our graduation pictures, we were wearing the big Uncle Sam hats, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> diploma in hand, you know. But, uh, you know, Miss Janie, I mean, I even remember her name. I mean, she was she was my, my first teacher, and, and that was in Greenfield High School, for all you local folks. Uh, <laughs> the home of the Yellow Jackets, even though the mascot is orange and black, it's the Yellow Jackets. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, I was at Greenfield for the first several years, and then, like I said, from there, I bounced around between the other small towns that were around there close, so... Uh, but yeah, man, kindergarten rocked. <laughs> Same thing, man. I was started off at uh, Long Point Baptist Church, uh, church school here in Houston. It was right around the corner from my house, and that's where my dad had gone to school when he was a kid. And um, I remember two things about it. Well, actually, more like three. I remember the smell of paste. Like I'd never oh. experienced paste. Like. So I walked in and you know you had your school supplies or whatever and there was already kids playing with the paste. Mm -hmm. And I remember that minty smell <laughs> and being like that smells awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like this like, like I'm going places. Uh number 2, I remember these kids like there was just a whole room full of kids and like before this I didn't go to daycare, my mom was stay at home mom. So this first time I'd ever been around that many people. And there's all these kids just running around and jumping and crashing into things and screaming and like, ah! and I remember just like looking around being like, what, what is good? And the teacher, no lie. This was, this is in the seventies too. 
the teacher busts out and has his long paddle. Oh yeah. Just pop pops her hand and the entire room just <laughs> shuts down. <laughs> like everybody goes sits down in a circle and we're all like but uh yeah, I remember that. Um I got my first pad. I, I got my first paddling in kindergarten, so I was off to a good start. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting ready to go on a field trip, and everybody was just super excited, and I was super excited and wasn't listening. And you know, bang, bang, bang! There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the the way the. The way of the paddle is like it's it's the way of the lore. Like there's right. every, like kids can hardly believe that that was a thing. But man, no, like it wasn't the principal. The teachers had them in their desk. Oh yeah, <laughs> <You know>? yeah. <laughs> like, they they were allowed but, allowed to use it as will. <laughs> I remember like my you know first week of school or whatever. I had a friend, little friend. He's my age, obviously, in my class, and his brother uh, was one of the older kids. And uh, I remember him being like, you know, talking to him like, who's that? He's like, oh, that's my brother. I'm like, well, how old is he? He's like, he's 10. And this kid was a monster. <laughs> he's, I mean, God, he might have been like four feet tall, you know, <laughs> but I was, I was like four and a half, five years old. I remember just like looking up at this kid, just being like, wow, I wonder what, you know, it's like 10 was so far away. Cause I was like five, <laughs> you know, that's twice my age and like three times right. my size, you know, but uh, <laughs> like how, how big kids, like how big people seemed whenever you were oh, so yeah. little. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Cause my wife talks about that. There's a, a lady, a local lady here named Doris Owens, little bitty lady. But when my daughter, when my daughter, when, I, when my wife was little, she would come and like watch over the class and they thought she was such a big person, you know, and she's just a little bitty short person, you know? And yeah, it's, it's funny how that perspective is, is just, uh, it really messes with your head. And it, it's amazing how those are the things you remember, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's always those things because, you know, I remember riding the school bus and there was, you know, the, 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 the kids that were a few years older that had taken, you know, paper and made their own book covers for their books and they were drawing stormtroopers and stuff on it. And I was like, wow, you know, I, <laughs> you know, I thought, man, this is, this is what I want to be when I grow up, you know? And, and, uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, no, no, I didn't. <laughs> I never even, I don't think I ever took a book home. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But yeah, dude. So like this school, I mean, I don't, I mean, it's, I, I was five. So, I mean, it was yeah, you know, 40 years ago, you know, it's like, you just have those little highlights, but I think in, in one of our prior episodes, we mentioned the Hamburglar yeah. from McDonald's. Well, the school, we, we had a, a, you know, a fall festival and I was only there for, I think a year and a half. Like, I think we moved either at the end of my first grade year or in the, like right in the middle of it. But, um, so I remember you know, getting, getting a good grade on a spelling test and my mom being happy. Like I remember those little kind of things, but I don't remember details. Yeah. I remember we had this Halloween festival thing and they brought in the McDonald land characters and the hamburger <laughs> scared me so bad. <laughs> I made my folks leave <laughs> like not, not go stand over there, but we're out of here. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, well, but yeah. So then, I'll I'll be honest. No. Earlier, when you said paste, I had a flashback as well, but not of the glue, the paste glue. We did the. I don't know if y'all did this at y'all school or not, but the fluoride treatment. Yeah, mm -hmm. did y'all ever do that? They would uh -uh. sit like your whole class down on the floor, and you get this little glop of nasty fluoride paste. And it was, you know, it was a hygiene thing. They're making everybody take this and brush their teeth with it. This stuff would gag you. I guarantee oh, you, no. the people that are out there that know what I'm talking about, I guarantee you they're gagging right now. This was the nastiest <laughs> stuff ever. And, you know, I'm, I'm wincing now just thinking about it. But they would they would literally oh, yeah. set everybody down. and you, you just walk into like a, a lobby and just sit on the floor and, and you grab a little spit cup and you grab this paste and they give you a toothbrush and you would dip it on your toothbrush and just brush your teeth and you spit it out in that cup 
I'm telling you, dude. I've seen kids hurl. <laughs> <laughs> it is the. Yeah, it I was don't the, remember that. I think they got better later on because I think my daughter and them used to do it, and they were like, "Oh, it's like peppermint." And I'm like, "God, <laughs> <laughs> this stuff tasted like rat's butthole." I mean, it was <laughs> it was the nastiest stuff, you know. So yeah. Uh, they- Somebody at some point did take that Mary Poppins spoonful of sugar thing serious, because <laughs> like even now, like I have to like both my daughters for you know if they're just bored and they decide they want to pop an Advil because it's grape flavored, they'll just be like, ah, oh, my head hurts. I'm like, okay, dude, no. You know, you can start you can start chewing the uh, the adult aspirin if you want. But hey, man, I have to, I have to admit <laughs> that was a junkie for the St. Joseph baby aspirins, man. Those little orange ones. Oh yeah, oh just, yeah. Just Those eat the whole awesome. eat the whole bottle. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> The ones that dissolved. Oh man, those things. Yeah. Were good. <laughs> I also remember, you know, the neighborhood kids going hanging out their house, and they had the Flintstone chewables, which I had never seen before. And I was like, "What's that? Well, they're Flintstones, uh-huh. and you eat them." I'm like, "Cool, let me try one." I was like, "This tastes terrible." <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were not good. <laughs> Turning into a junkie at a young age, like getting all hopped up on Flintstones <laughs> vitamins. Flintstones vitamins. Yeah. Con- contraband drugs. <laughs> and even though they tasted bad, you still ate them because you thought you were supposed to, you know. Oh, yeah. That kid mentality. This is for kids. So, it's it, you know, my granddaughter comes over the house and be like, can you put it on a kid's show, please? <laughs> when we're watching TV. Mm-hmm. So it's that thing of, well, it's made for a kid, so I have to do it. <laughs> of course. Dude, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's that's the problem is you know, like all the kids stuff that we liked was awesome, and all the kids stuff that they like kind of sucks. <laughs> oh. You know, you know this by, by the fact that they've brought back. I don't know when was the last time you've been to a department store, but they brought back He Man. Yeah, like for twenty twenty, like they brought back like the the, the original He Man line. Yeah, the 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 only difference is they're they're jointed now instead of uh you know <laughs> stiff um but yeah i mean and i'm not surprised yeah that you know because they re they rehash all of these things but they've they're brought back gi joe they brought mm-hmm. back transformers like all of these things were super successful they, they brought back because it was awesome then right you know it'll be awesome the next <laughs> so time yeah it'll be I mean, awesome it... the next time yeah, I mean, uh, why not? Because I heard, I believe they're doing another He-Man. I don't know if it's an animated thing or what, but I mean, they're they're trying to bring it back. I, I'll be right there with them, man. Because I was, <laughs> I, I was loving me some He-Man. But yeah, dude. So like, yeah, you know, was like I said, moved away like first grade. So then I started in Little Towns Christian School, and you know, it's like. We did not know for nothing. We went to school and learned stuff and went home. And then we had other, you know, we had our friends that were in the neighborhood that didn't go to our school. And they're like, well, where do you go? And they're like, oh, we go to such and such. And they're like, oh, okay, where do you go? Oh, we go to this place. And I'm like, cool, mm-hmm. want to ride bikes? You know, it's right. like, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of an odd, well, right now we can't even do ride bikes because of human trafficking and right. Ebola and stuff. But, um, you know, like nobody cared. You'd just be like, playing in the neighborhood but um man <laughs> was it i guess i was second grade that would have been about right that's when like he-man and gi joe well, mostly he-man he-man was starting to hit yeah you know, kind of and i i did a podcast with a guy who owns a local toy store here that was like if you were like you know six seven years old <laughs> in in 1982, 83, yeah, and you didn't get Cra- Castle Gray School for Christmas because <laughs> your parents didn't like you because they were like nine, they were like nine ninety nine and came with four figures. Like they wanted these things to right. be out, you yeah. know. It's like that's what everybody wanted. I woke up on Christmas Day and there, there they were, like <laughs> boom. And my dad was all grumbly because you know, of course. Skeletor is the evil, you know, everything, everything on the bad guy side is evil, but even on the good, good guy side, everything's still magical. And, you know, it's, <laughs> and he's like, I'm trying to, 
you know, trying to do this whole, you know, <laughs> like, so I remember him telling my mom, send my son to Christian school and do all this stuff. And then he gets all these demonic toys in the, <laughs> in the mail. <laughs> I didn't care, man. I was a bliss. But then, you know, that's when, like, so we bring some, we're second grade. So we bring some, so they bring our He-Man guys to school. And the teacher would be like, you can't do that. Like somebody would get caught. Like you can't bring He-Man guys to school. Right. So what we figured out, what we figured out that is if you broke off one of their arms and then put a sword in the hand, that it didn't quite count as a full guy, <laughs> but we could still like, this is like sword fight with each other. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <the> best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course that didn't fly either. We got that, that band as well. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, of course, at, at that point, I'm thinking of third grade for me. I guess I knew all along that I was just going to be that guy, right? And I may have told <laughs> this before on here. I can't remember. But, you know, we did show and tell. And they would let people bring their little Peter Pan records and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. You yeah. did mention that. I brought Kiss Destroyer <laughs> and Queen News of the World, two of the most horrifying <laughs> album covers in history. <laughs> And just the looks on the other kids' faces were just like, I mean, to me, it's like totally normal. You know, I'm like, yeah, this is this is cool stuff. Because I was hanging out with, you know, uh, uh, some some older kids that would babysit. Matter of fact, one of my, my, my cousins was my babysitter. Huge Kiss fan. So I was exposed to all this stuff early on. But yeah, man, I took Kiss Destroyer and threw it up there with the city burning behind them. You know, everybody's like... I don't think I want to listen to that, you know. So, okay, how about this one? I pull out News of the World, which is where the big robot is stabbing Freddie Mercury with his finger, the blood dripping off of it. And they're freaking out. And, of course, the first song on there is We Will Rock You, you know. So, you know, yeah, I was just going to I was gonna be that guy. So, uh, great, great. You, bought a, you brought an Alabama record? Great. Watch this. <laughs> well, of course. You know, I was kind of that. I was I was kind of that guy too. It took me a little bit, but I actually did like um, that. And and I don't know. Maybe it's just my personality. Maybe I've just always been a contrarian. In that, like, like oh, like oh, you think that's crazy? Check this out. You right. know what I mean? Like, um, because I I, re- I remember that. I remember being, you know. That, Who was it? Because it was again Christian Christian school. I remember this kid. He was an older kid. We went over to his house. Something something to do because my mom worked at the church, and so we went over to this kid's house. And he was much older than me. He was in like sixth or seventh grade, and I was in second. You know, so he's yeah pretty big dude. And uh, he had all of these tapes by this band called Petra. Oh yeah, heard it, ever heard of them? Oh yeah, and um. It was rocking. Yeah. Christian like I would, rock. I, you know, my, my dad listened to country at the time. And we're talking like the old old eighties radio country. So mm-hmm. that was all that was on the radio. And he had all these records, but I was too young to to really start sampling that stuff yet. Because again, I'm like six, seven years old. This kid had Petra and so um he's we went in his room and he played a couple of tapes and he had like Michael Jackson's thriller and and uh so he actually had a dual deck boom box and he taped me a couple, like a couple of records yeah. um, while we were there. And, uh, you know, my dad didn't care. He was like, oh, you know, it was Christian rock. And he knew who Michael Jackson was. So he probably yeah. didn't understand. Like he, he did not know yet. Cause it wasn't thriller. It was the, off, the, pri- off prior the album. So, uh, off the wall. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, so I had, I had tapes, but I didn't have a tape deck at home. I like dad had a tape deck, so I'd put them in there and play them. And, you know, yeah. but then, you know, man, when you talk about it at school, like, oh yeah, I'm a metalhead, you know, cause, <laughs> cause, cause, <laughs> got this. I've got Petra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, consider like, I remember there was this kid in my class. He was like, oh no, that's bad stuff. I'm like, <laughs> okay, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and again, like you say with Kiss Destroyer, because it was not very long after. Yeah. Just you wait. It, it was it was just a, a a year or so, a hop, skip, and a jump, and um, you know. Yeah. Right. It was like, uh oh. They 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 were the, the the biggest thing on the planet, and they were devil worshippers, and 
yeah, ran the gambit with all that. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, let's talk about this. Okay, uh, what's the either? Well, were you were you asked out on a date first, or did you ask somebody out on a day, date first? That was one of those things where I don't really know. I think because, and honestly, it was one of those things where there's a girl that I liked and I didn't know that she liked me. And then we all kind of got together and then we were at a place and it was like, oh, this is what's happening. Oh, yeah. It was not like a like, oh, hey, this is what we're doing. But then it's like, okay, let's dance. And it's like, oh, you know, like, oh, we're like. Because, and I, you know, I was going to say, you know, like the, the school dances, you know, seventh, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. Yep. You know, the first time you get there and your mom gets you all gussied up and gives you your dad's cologne and you stand in there and like, you know, all these kids nervous in an auditorium right. going like, <laughs> like the, that, that, that scene from uh, Dazed and Confused, mm-hmm. like knocks it out of the park where yep. they're just... When, when they bust in there and they're just playing Nazareth and everybody's just kind of looking around like that was <laughs> that was my hometown and stuff. Um, uh, well, but yeah, the first time I the first time I realized that I was on a date, I didn't realize that I was on a date. So, <laughs> how about yourself? Well, mine it was it was I was in fifth grade. It's, it's funny I remember this, but it's fifth grade and it was the girl that lived across the road from me. Her name was Stephanie. And she came up and asked me to go to see a movie with her. This is 81, I think. And she wanted to go see My Bloody Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> and at the time, I actually said, no, that's okay. But that was the first time I was asked to go out on a date with somebody, and she wanted me and her to go see My Bloody Valentine. Dude, wow. that was almost a match made in heaven right there. <laughs> <laughs> Fifth grade girl asking you to go see the minor, <laughs> the, yeah. the, the, the killer minor horror movie. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so that that's that's a that's a weird one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yeah, I mean, it's funny yeah, again it was... how how you just put these things together because it's all this this sequential jumbled up mess of stuff, right? So, but yeah, for real, because because I hadn't thought about it because you're like, you know, because of course, like the asking out on a date sort of thing. So like that's anchoring my mind and I can't even remember the girl's name. She was just one of us in the dork group that was kind (laughs) of in in the seventh grade that we always hung out. Uh, We were in the how was her name? I think it was Michelle because we all went to like the uh, the science teacher had a thing where we'd go like look through telescopes and stuff so we'd show up on on friday nights and look through telescopes at you know yeah. stuff and it's like oh, we were all you know kind of little group but man i was in like the third grade third or fourth grade i guess and this dude you'll love this this is a way you can get away with stuff now that you could not get away with then so of course we <laughs> i got a bunch of those we, coming up <laughs> <laughs> You, you know how we were loving on some ninjas, right? <laughs> we, we, we were loving, on, dude, me and my friends, just ninja, ninja-tastic. So the school, the church school I had, I, I, we were at, it had a, a one of those big wooden jungle gym things. It was kind of like a, a fort, you know, with all the bridges and the chains and all of that yeah. splintery stuff. And so we used to fight and fight, and girls chase boys and girls chase you know, boys chase girls and blah, 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 blah. Right. Well, um, there's this girl there, and her name was uh, Tamara. And I just thought she was the bee's knees. She was just cute as could be. But, of course, when girls are cute as the, cute as the button, they don't pay attention to you in right. any Absolutely. sort of way. But she had an older brother like there was a year older than us because she was my age and he was a year older that just used to mess with me all the time. <laughs> like he'd trip me. He'd like yeah. he'd just give me a hard time. And finally I got tired of it. And I told him that if he didn't stop, I was going to kick his ass. And like, not, not exactly those words. Right. But I'm just like, you know, you're going to be sorry. You might get a knuckle sandwich. Later. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so, so this is over the course of like, 
four or five days, I guess. He was he was antagonizing me. I was crushing on his sister, and then I threatened him. And then at some point, a couple of her friends kind of got me in a corner and were, and were like, do you like her? And I was like, I uh, don't know how to answer, so I just ran away. <laughs> 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 so then one of them came up later like the next day or two and was like well she likes you and so then i'm like well tell her i like her too so then that means i got a girlfriend that's all i hadn't actually spoken a word right. yeah to her but i was just like okay so i am king of the playground i'm king of the school <laughs> like this girl i've been crushing on likes me and i like her back so that i don't know where that means but this is where we're going right we had a bench where the teachers used to sit and it had a canopy over it and the support of the canopy was this x you know of two by fours yeah and me and my buddies used to play ninjas in that and like the thing that we like to do is crawl up into the x and then like swing out of it like with a flying sure. kick. yeah so i was sitting in the in there waiting for my buddy to come by so i could leap out and jump on his shoulder but what ended up happening was this girl's older brother comes running by kicking a soccer ball right as I jumped out to leap. And I caught him with both feet right in the mouth, like <laughs> right in the teeth, busted his lips all up, <laughs> like completely just dropped him. I was I was so like, I really didn't mean to do it. Right. I, I, I totally it was a complete accident. I felt so bad he was crying he's bleeding but he did not believe me that she said like and his friends were like oh no they've been at it all all week and now you just like kicked him in the face and i was just like I'm like i don't know what this means for the relationship with his sister i don't know <laughs> like you know, you know i'm like third fourth grade but for jumping out and giving this dude a double dose of yeah. converse all-star right in the freaking lip i got I got sent to the corner of the playground for five minutes. Whoa, man. <laughs> he That's... got taken inside and probably had to wash his mouth out with fluoride. Five whole minutes, got, man. That's I got, dude, I got sidelined for five minutes. That's and strict. I got a very strong point <laughs> pointing at by the teachers that were like, we do not kick each other in this, in this school. <laughs> Dude, I was afraid I was going to jail. Like I, was, I, was, I remember, dude, I was crying. I am so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, but yeah, I've, I've got one to go with that, man. The, the only fight I've ever been in in my whole life. This is fifth grade again. This is at a different school than than where Stephanie was. This is in Sharon, and this guy was a bully. Picked on me every day, and every day he tried to get people riled up. And he'd say, "You just meet me, and you meet me after school. Meet me after school." And that was his thing. He said it every day. Well, one day I said, all right, I'll meet you out there. <laughs> and then he was like, well, I mean it, though. When, I mean, I'll meet you after school. Okay, I'll be there. Well, we get out there, and <laughs> he starts, you know, he he doesn't, it's like he wants to fight, but he wants to do more talk than anything else, right? Be a big bragger or whatever. Well, you start with the name calling stuff, and I'm sorry, I mean, I go into pure Carlin mode. I was watching Carlin at a way too early <laughs> age. So after I said a few nice things about his mom, he couldn't stand it anymore, and he come running at me full speed ahead. And and he leaped like he was going to tackle me, and I just kicked him right in the throat. <laughs> just, a, just a straight up kick, like kicking a kickball. And that dude hit the ground, his eyes rolled back in his head. And, I mean, there's a bunch of people standing around, and I... And I, I'm freaking out, right? <laughs> so I get on top of him. I'm like, I'm like shaking him, trying to get him up. And everybody's like, "Man, look at Rick. He's going insane. He's gonna choke him to death." I'm going, "Get up, dude. Get up." You know. So needless to say, after that, nobody ever wanted to fight me because <laughs> I'll kick you in the throat. Right. Uh, so. <laughs> But I wanted to step back. Well, this is actually sixth grade. This is when we moved to Gleason for the first time. This is the school I ended up graduating at from sixth grade to, to, to senior. And I wanted to bring this up because this is that thing like you were just talking about, the, the girl-guy relationship. And just like with Stephanie, I just I wasn't a fan of girls at the time, right? I'm a, I'm a boy, right? <laughs> I don't care. And uh, even though the movie's cool, and Stephanie, you're cool. But, yeah, don't worry about it. But uh, I was sitting in in my desk, 
And behind me was a girl named Trisha Huey. Trisha, if you're listening, you know this is true. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, she would mess with me all the time, like pull my hair, all that typical stuff. So instead of a guy doing it to a girl, she was doing that stuff to me. And then one day the teacher left the room. Well, we had our, our, our box of crayons and all that stuff, right? The big, you know, box that you kept that had your pencils and all that stuff in there, pencil mm-hmm. sharpers, under my desk. Well, she stomped on it, messed it all up. And uh, like I said, she kept messing with me, and she ended up taking double-sided tape and pulling the tape part off of it, just wadding up the adhesive stuff and just smacked it in my head and just started rubbing it in my hair. Oh, no. I turned around, and I mean, I open hand smacked her right across the face. I mean, just wham! <laughs> and then not long after that, the teacher walks back in, and I've got my hair up in the air with a pair of school scissors <laughs> chomping away at this chunk of crap in my hair. She's behind me with a big red handprint on her face and crying. And the teacher says, what's going on in here? And I turned and I looked at Trisha. Trisha looked at the t- teacher and said, Nothing. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I can't remember if we got in trouble or not, but man, I I did. I hauled off and I knocked her into the moral. <laughs> uh, I didn't know at the time you weren't supposed to hit girls, but you know. <laughs> yeah. She took it like a man. Try, try real. <laughs> it's, it's like it's, Need- the, it's the the slap fight there. <laughs> Needless to say, later on we got along great, and we we're we we're still good buddies. So, but she deserved it that day. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and who knows? Man, I, girl, I'm not putting words in her mouth that she maybe she kind of liked me at the time, and that was just her way of. Flirting. <laughs> I don't know, but it didn't work. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So what about uh, what, what about lunch rooms? We gotta talk about lunch rooms, right? Well, you know, absolutely. I was gonna say so. Like whenever I was in, uh, you know, elementary school, then we moved. Uh, the the church shut down. So then, or they're not the church, but the school part of the church shut down. So you know, I was sixth grade. I moved into the elementary school. Uh, the you know the, and I knew a lot of the guys that were there, but I also kind of knew them from a distance. Like I knew that that guy who rode his bike was going to the elementary school. And I knew he lived like two streets over, but I didn't know him. Mm-hmm. But that's where I met a lot of my friends. Yeah. Um, that would become like, I'm even still friends with them on Facebook now, you know, it's like, Hey man, what's going on? You know, like nice tattoo, that kind of stuff. And, um, there was like four or five of us. And I was just like, it was, it was great because like new school, even though it's same town, but new school, you just walk in and there's like, whoa, I know him and I know him and I know her and I know her and I, whoa, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like, I want to know her. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, is, but, that, uh, is yeah, that the, so is that the biblical no, or is that just no? <laughs> <laughs> That's all of the above. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you say, so then we go in the lunchroom, but that was the first time because in the, in the, in the. You know, the private school, it was it was a lot smaller. There was a whole lot fewer kids, and things were quite a bit more well-regulated. Now, you could kick a kid in the face and not get yeah, in trouble. Yeah, sure. But you couldn't, you couldn't, you know, raise your voice or get up and leave your seat and run around the lunchroom. But when when I was in when – I, when I started in sixth grade at this other one, it was like all bets are off, man. And there's <laughs> kids over there, like, putting mashed potatoes on their spoons. And oh, fingers. absolutely. <laughs> you know, it's just, like, food fights and kids doing gross things. And, of course, then you get a bunch of guys who are now right at the cusp of puberty. Girls are starting to blossom out. And, man, you talk about, like, some some pirate talk going on. And I was just absolutely <laughs> shocked. Like, my poor ears were just, like... I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm just right. laughing because to not laugh is to, to be kicked out yeah. of, the, you know, like completely social outcast. I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. Um, but yeah, like those, the lunchroom was just absolute bedlam. It was, it was yeah. so great though, because, you know, it's like this just bastion of freedom. It's like you get a whole bunch of peas. I don't even like peas. Fling, fling, let's give them to that guy. <laughs> well, our, our thing was you would take your pickles and you get some packets of ketchup, and you dip your pickles in the ketchup, and put them on your fork, and smack them up on the ceiling. They would stick. 
and it it got to where you would do like stacks of pickles. You know, hey, he's doing eighteen pickles today. <laughs> Smack, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's. There was that. There was uh, if you caught somebody leaning back in their chair. You know, this is back when they actually had chairs and not not you know benches or whatever they would lean back in their chair and you take a package of mustard or whatever and put it underneath that way when yep. it came down it just go across the floor you know just a streak yep. of mustard you know that goes over three tables away you know <laughs> of course so, yeah oh yeah those that all was that fun stuff. stuff man and i will say <laughs> bradford bradford school man the they had the best lunch of all the schools i went to man they had a strawberry cake and that was the thing is they had desserts laid out like like a dang buffet you know you got your your regular you know school food but dessert was like man a piece of strawberry cake bigger than a slice of pizza <laughs> and it was great you know but yeah yeah school pizza man come on dude i was gonna say that was the thing um it, it like sometimes it got hard to decide because like my mom back then like she got the the Christian school food was included with tuition. So I ate mm. a, I ate lunch at school every day and whatever it was. So you were you just used to it. You know, you'd have sandwiches and hamburgers and right. you know, nor, normal fare. And it wasn't either good nor bad or, or whatever. It was just food. But when I started elementary school, you know, public school, you had to pay for your lunch. And even though it was like a quarter or 50 cents or something, mom was like, uh-uh-uh. So she'd like send me, she'd make my lunch. And that was fine because normally, you know, it's like, you know, <laughs> call it what it is, bologna and cheese sandwich, with, right? you know, with Dorito chips and a star crunch and, you know, a little note that says I love you in my He-Man lunchbox. So I was cool, yeah. you know, <laughs> but, <clears throat> but, um, then yeah, you're right. Pizza day. Yeah. How do I get more of that? Right. Like, you know, <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta go get back in the line and I don't want the corn. Right. <laughs> just just st- stack up the pizzas and the burritos, man. Yeah. Those those uh deep fried chimichanga burritos. Oh that, yeah. You know? And a funny story about that. So like we've got a, a, a convenience store chain called Stripes down here. And uh they sell those burritos. Yeah. Now they don't just look like those burritos, they taste like the school burritos. Yeah. And you know, so like every now and then if you're just like Life's life's too hard, and I'm both nostalgic and suicidal. You buy two for a dollar, or two for fifty cents, or whatever, because they're just artery cloggers. Oh right? yeah. <laughs> but then I'm sitting there being like, okay, now let's let's think about this. If if in you know I think it was a couple of years ago they were selling them. It's like if, if we're in the in the twenties, you know, we're in the late teens, and you can get two of these things for a dollar. <laughs> what was what was their costing for the state? Right. In the in those volumes of the millions that they were passing yeah. out and charging you, you know, 50 cents or a dollar for back then. Probably, like the state was raking in the yeah, dough. Probably, probably about eight cents. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. man. Well, what's, it's funny you say that because I just recently got one of those. I stopped a little. We have uh, little general gas stations here. And uh, they're part of BP somehow. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, man, they got them. Those fried burritos, man. You just you, you get them, and nothing tastes like them. And you know they're just they're just frozen burritos. They just deep fry them. That's all it is. That's the magic. Yeah. And uh, uh-huh. but yeah. they're still they're still awesome. Oh, you take a bite and you hear angels sing. Oh, it's like yeah, you know. because you'd have certain days when you were like, all excited that you were bringing your lunch, and then you have other days where you're like. Dang it! Want, anybody, people <laughs> yeah. will be like, dude. I'll, then they'll be like, man, I'll take your Star Crunch. You're like, nope, I'm keeping the Star Crunch. <laughs> Star Crunch is hands <laughs> off. <laughs> Star Crunch. <laughs> Star Crunch was. Yeah. They still are. Yeah. They still are, but again, you have to get both nostalgic and just yeah. ready for a big old sugar rush. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm a zebra cake That's... guy, but I'm, I'm with you though. I love Star Crunch too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, they, we had. Oddly enough, most most of the food at Gleason was pretty dang decent. I mean, like I said, pizza was a given, right? Nobody missed mm-hmm. pizza day. Um, there we we had shepherd's pie. Or they oh, called wow. they called it hamburger pie, what they called it at school, and it, it, it was great. I mean, you, you you were happy when you had it, and the chili was actually pretty dang good. So, you know. <laughs> 
You know, there's the other things, yeah, like you said, the the corn and the peas and all that stuff. You're like, yeah, don't even waste your time on that. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, that's a, that's a farm subsidy right there because yeah. everybody knows that nobody's eating that. <laughs> they can process it through and it's like money laundering right it's like oh we bought so many tons of corn that ended up in the landfill <laughs> it's, <not, laughs> it's okay <laughs> yeah. uh, but man this was getting to high school which yeah. was the uh so my freshman year of high school stratford over here um, uh was the first year i don't i i guess the previous year did they did something but they they banned off campus lunch so you couldn't leave to go you know um which sucked because prior you could so if you looked across the street you know if you look that way there's mcdonald's there's kfc there's a popeyes across the street um there's a general joe's chopsticks if you look that way (laughs) there was like a wendy's (laughs) and a taco bell like there was so much stuff just right around the school and it was all just custom built there because they could have off-campus lunch but then when we got there it's like nope you're still having the same old junior high food that you had before. <laughs> so then, you know, you start bringing your lunch or trying to sneak out or whatever. And right. I remember like, because in order to get to the, the safer side, because the school was surrounded, like you got to think militarily, like, like it's, it's wide open. Don't go through that. You got to be covered. So if you go this way, you can kind of duck behind the tennis courts and then go behind the backstop of the mm-hmm. baseball field and then hop the fence. And you're in, you're in the parking lot of McDonald's, right? Like, yeah, you don't think about it now. You be like, I'm not gonna hop a freaking fence to get to McDonald's, <laughs> but we did because it was not, you know. But, but man, then they opened up the snack bar, the snack yeah. bar, and the Coke machines, and it was like, that's. I think that was the beginning of the end because the snack bar, you could get the burritos, you could get the yeah. pizza, none of none of the sides. It was cheap. The chicken supreme. But man, so me and my buddy Jason, we had a friend named Samir who, like, I'm six foot three, and Samir was probably like five five. So he's like stood about like this on me, and rain or shine, hot or cold, he always wore a uh, one of those pull over beach ponchos, the, <laughs> the the woven ones, yeah, with the hood, right. And my friend Jason just used to think it was the funniest thing. He'd like order two or three hamburgers and just drop them into Samir's hood, <laughs> so that like he's like. Going through the lunch line, you know, the lunch lady wouldn't see the food, yeah. so she wouldn't charge him or whatever. Sure. But but then Samir's like, why are you always doing that? <laughs> like, Jason's like, because I don't have any money. Right. He's like, well, either bring money or, you know, he's like, but why are you putting it in my hood? <laughs> he's <laughs> like, because then I'm not the one getting busted for stealing, dude. Because I, <laughs> I don't have a way to hold them on me and not make it look like I'm stealing something. Yeah. Exactly. Nobody's looking Samir's at you. Like, oh. <laughs> Samir, Samir's like, that's what you've been doing this whole time? <laughs> he didn't quite understand. He finally figured it out. That's pretty like, brilliant. <laughs> that's a pretty smart idea. Yeah. We didn't uh, have we didn't have Coke yeah, machines. We had, uh, you could actually get iced tea, though, sweet tea. So, oh, wow. I, I don't, I, you know, how is one better than the other? Hey, let's get these kids. We had a, you know, you had an ice cream cone machine. And you had a sweet tea, but you couldn't have Cokes or soft drinks. I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh, no, we had a bunch of soft drink machines all around the bottom of the stairs. Uh, and then, you know, like, so so my high school from aerial view kind of looked like a figure eight. So it was, you know, hmm. rectangular building with two courtyards and then the lunchrooms were in kind of in between. And then, yeah. It was three stories high, and there's classrooms around like that. Yeah. But the courtyards were all, you know, like the entire thing was completely wide open. So you could eat lunch outside. You could go play basketball. You could go to the weight, you know, to the gym, whatever. Um, but, yeah, the food the food, <laughs> the, the food, was limited until they brought in that snack bar, but that was awesome. But then, yeah. you know, same thing. It's like we had, and I described it on, on, on a Facebook post one time, but this was kind of in that early 90s when – the whole gang thing started kind of blowing up in pop culture and we had two rival Asian groups and me and my buddy were sitting there eating lunch, talking, BSing, and you look up and you see one of the courtyards. It's got all, it's got trees and you know, it's all well nicely. Yeah. You know, it's like a little park 
And there are these dudes flying around, kicking the crap out of each other, like out of a movie. <laughs> and there's this there's this one dude who had a broken leg, his football player, and he had a broken leg, and he's standing there hopping around on one leg, knocking people out with his crutch. Wow. <laughs> like just, I mean, and they are just going at it. I mean, it was some rival crap. That's crazy. But we're sitting there watching this just like, this is amazing. Like, and then a teacher came out and they all ran away except for the dude with the crutch, but this crutch was all bent. <laughs> and he's like, look what they did to my crutch. But he's the one that was pounding people. <laughs> Again, I don't think any of them got in trouble. Wow. There was no, you know, nobody called the president, no domestic terrorism. It was just kids being <laughs> stupid in a courtyard. Well, but... see, our, our area that you fought in in high school is you went to the smoking area, which was down mm-hmm. at the end of a long hallway. So that's where all the big fights were, right? So, yeah, people just gather around. You see money switching hands, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, that's that was kind of that, that whole aspect of that. You know, it's funny because we tell our daughter all this stuff. She's like, you had a smoking area at school? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, things see, were... we didn't, we didn't, we, we had a teacher's lounge on oh, the yeah. second floor that was, you know, smelled like smoke like crazy. Yeah. We didn't have, like, it was not allowed. Like, the smoking areas had been. Yeah, I imagine by your time. Gone. Yeah. But uh, what we did have was that smoker's bathroom that everybody kind of mm-hmm. congregated in, right? Yeah. And I remember, like, it was a couple of different ones, but <laughs> you'd, <laughs> you'd hear somebody, boom, kick the door, and then you'd hear, pss, pss, Yep, putting them out. And somebody would be like, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Damn you. Yeah. It used to happen a lot. But yeah, man, I mean, it's, you know, all the time she would just say, you guys had so much more fun at school than we did. It's like, yeah, you you kind of could do whatever. Hey, have you seen, this just came out, but there's a, a documentary on HBO. It just came out. It's called uh, Class Action Park. No. uh Have you heard anything about it? No. uh Okay. I'm hearing of it. I'm writing it down. Cause... Dude, I'm telling you. But it, it's, it's, it's during the 80s when it was in its heyday. So it's it's a theme park, a water park more than anything else, called Action Park. And supposedly it was the most dangerous theme park you could go to. And the stories behind it is just freaking unbelievable, man. You got to see it. <laughs> but it really it really pinpoints cuz they even talk about it on the show about that was just the 80s, you know? That's just yeah. the way we rolled. You know, and these these people now that were doing all the stuff back then, they were like, man, if I knew my kids were doing what I was doing back then, ain't no way I'd let them go to a place like this. You know, of course, and, yeah. So it's 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 crazy. You know, you you got to see it. If everybody listening out there, do yourself a favor, check out Class Action Park because it is unbelievable. The the guy was in charge of it. It's in New Jersey. The guy was in charge of it. Couldn't get insurance. They, it was too dangerous of a place. They would not insure. <laughs> the dude created his own insurance company, so oh, wow. so he could carry fake insurance to cover everything. <laughs> I'm talking people were dying at this place. <laughs> That's insane. It is, man. So you, and rather than just fix it and make it not right, not deadly, no. he just <laughs> no. It, we could do a whole show on that on that show if you end up watching okay. it because it's I'll check it out. It is unreal, man. I mean, they just they just built these rides. They didn't ask for engineers. They just did it themselves. <laughs> it's crazy. So yeah, but it really pinpoint pinpoints just kind of how things were because you know we had a guy right on top of. They wouldn't even let us go to prom separately. I mean, that's we had a class of forty one kids, really small class, and we're all still really close. But they wouldn't trust us because <laughs> of all the, you know, there's a list of things that I could talk about that would be incriminating that we did in that school. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they wouldn't let us ride separately to prom. So we had to all ride a school bus together to prom. Oh, no. <laughs> but we had one guy that got a little tipsy and climbed on top of the bus. Now I'm talking 30 miles away from school this is where this place is. So you're going down a highway. This dude climbs on top of the bus and tries to teen wolf <laughs> to prom in a tuxedo. <laughs> Obviously, he didn't make it. <laughs> so, you know, off in the ditch he goes. And, uh, yeah. I mean, did, get, did y'all stop and let him back on? No. <laughs> no, we went on a prom. That that's our class in a nutshell. I mean, it was it was 
crazy. <laughs> Absolutely. To this day, when I see, he, he was also the sponsor of the class, but he was the ag teacher. Every time I see him, I still apologize. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, that's it, awesome. we were known as that class, right? I mean, but, but it was, but at the same time, people kind of liked us too. But if we had a, like a substitute teacher or somebody that we didn't like and they came in and gave us a hard time, they didn't get in the subscription to Newsweek, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were that class, you know, we, you of know, course. guys getting busted for you know indecent exposure. I mean, just guys whipping it out, <laughs> showing the girls right in the hallway. I mean, just crazy. <laughs> Well, your headphones that you got on, it reminds me, one day, my, my stepfather had this cool set of old headphones, 70 with a big pigtail cable, right, for listening to your albums on your big stereo system. I took them to school one day, because these are obsolete at this point, right? Because everybody's got the Walkman headphones. Uh-huh. So I'm walking down the hall, i am got about half this cable, and I'm just slinging like I'm, you know, Michigan J. Frog. <laughs> With these headphones on, and I know everybody's walking up and down the hall, which is really, really tight when you walk down that hallway. And my so-called best friend at the time, <laughs> we were, I don't know, maybe 30 feet away from each other. And he looked down there and he said, look at that stupid ass. <laughs> and I said, F you, buddy. <laughs> well, we didn't know it, but one of the teachers was in her room that was in between the two of us and heard us both. So, yeah, we get called into her room, and uh, our other buddy is out in the hallway, and he's playing distraction. <laughs> so the teacher says, so, Rick, I, I heard you say something out there that, that, that wasn't appropriate. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, this guy was yelling at me, and I don't know what you're talking about. And he's like, well, now, Jeff, what did you say? Just like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about either. And then Scott was out in the hallway, which is right where the water fountain was when you looked out this teacher's door. And he would keep looking in there and kind of be messing around, knowing that he was, you know, getting on her nerves. And uh, finally she says, uh, Scott, we were sitting in, in her room. She said, Scott, which is the guy out in the hall, you, you close the door. And he's like, what? Scott, <laughs> close the door. I'm not in your door. <laughs> Scott, that's not what I said. I said, you need to close the door. But I don't understand why you want me to shut the door for Scott closed the door. He said, all right, I'll shut your GD door. <laughs> and he slammed oh, no. it. <laughs> so the next thing I know, we're out of her office or out of her room, and then Scott's in the room. So he kind of got us out of it. And this was just a day-by-day thing, man. It was just, <laughs> that was our senior year in school was absolutely bonkers. I'm going to say there there is a picture of me out there on Facebook somewhere of me Teen Wolfen on top of a green station wagon on the football field in a dress. I've seen that one. In a dress, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> no real reason why. That's just that was school, man. <laughs> well, dude, you're talking. You talk about the danger because you're talking about like I remember I had to do. I did a uh, paper in college, and it was about. Uh, it was all actually about business ethics because it was in a business oh, yeah. class. Was talking about the uh, the Ford Pinto that <laughs> would, would blow up, yeah, and how you know it's like once they figured out that this car would blow up, um, you know it changed it changed safety standards in general for like the entire industry, but then it'll, it had cascading effects on a lot of other industries as well. Yep. But the thing that was so crazy was Ford actually did a lot of research, not on the cars. Like they discovered that the car was dangerous when everybody else did. But when they were like, okay, so is safety a feature that you care about? Like, would you <laughs> trade safety for a lower price car, a lighter car, a faster car, a cooler car, one with more storage, one, you know, <laughs> it's like it landed right at the bottom of anybody's wish list. And this was just like random polls of people who drove cars. Right. Like, if we're Ford and we're making you a car, which of these things do you care about? And yeah. it was like safety was like down through, oh, yeah. like, through sure. the floor. Yeah. And so they're just like, okay, so nobody cares. <laughs> we, won't, we won't bother. Well, it, it was it was the evil Knievel generation, right? I mean, yeah. your grandfather would be driving down the road smoking a cigarette and drinking a beer with no seat belts on. That was, I mean, nobody mm-hmm. cared. I can't tell you how many times that we just rode with in you the... you standing on the front seat. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I can't tell you how many times we just rode in the back of the truck, right? Just in the bed uh-huh. of the truck. No big deal. 
So it's it's weird now because even now I have a problem with like ah stupid seat belts, you know, because we just <laughs> we grew up with that with that not being an issue. And guess what? Guess who grew up with two Ford Pintos in their family? <laughs> this guy. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My grandfather had one, and we had one. <laughs> I rode in the back seat of a Ford Pinto for many a year, man. <laughs> and you I'm still here. Sure. You gotta just make sure you're far out in front of the people who are right. You. <laughs> yeah, you don't want anybody behind you, if, you know, being awful close. Yeah, good times, man. Well, man, I, it is. I honestly, dude, I thought dude, we could keep probably keep on going. We made it to the end of high school though, so dude, we'll save college for another day. Because college for me, I didn't really go. I didn't so. do. I, I didn't do college, but I, <laughs> I I did so much in my senior year at high school that I'm sure there's many stories of young rick morgan i can tell <laughs> <laughs> i'm down dude this has been fun so i guess let's tell remind everybody to hit us up on facebook on on twitter on instagram on youtube on everything else um and we picked up one more subscriber on youtube so we're up to five <laughs> awesome. hey that's 20 that's 20 percent more than we had before so, <laughs> that was a 20 percent increase man Thank you, Dan Bone. <laughs> Dan Bone is is our new listener or a new subscriber Sweet. on YouTube, which you know he's he's aces, man. He's he's one of my favorite people. Awesome, awesome. Well, let's uh, let's shut it down, and we will see you next week. Mm-hmm.